a concert with a message of peace and tolerance. On 31st October 2015, one of the world's most renowned orchestra directors, Daniel Berenbaum, performed with his West Eastern Divan Orchestra at the Palais des Nations, Geneva, in the Human Rights Chamber. Ban Ki-moon, the United Nations Secretary General, delivered the opening remarks. With armed conflict spreading across the Middle East, particularly in Syria and Yemen, and with yet another round of Israeli-Palestinian hostilities, it is heartening to see young Israeli and Arab musicians replacing the noise of violence with sounds of harmony. In 1999, Daniel Berenbaum co-founded the West Eastern Divan Orchestra with the late Palestinian literary scholar Edward Said. Composed of young musicians from Israel, Palestine and other Middle Eastern countries, the orchestra aims to promote understanding between Israelis and Palestinians and to pave the way for a peaceful solution of the Arab-Israeli conflict. When they spend all day long trying to make music together, playing in, together in the same, the same note, in the same uh, volume, with the same volume, with the same quality of sound. Eventually, the differences, at least mentally, uh, get softer. And, uh, but I think for non-musicians, uh, what the divan can and should do is become an example, an example of the acceptance of the other, provided he accepts you too. Since 1967, Daniel Berenbaum, whose background is Argentinian, Israeli, Spanish and Palestinian, has been leading some of the most prestigious orchestras in the world. For many years, he's been committed to reconciling the warring communities in the Middle East conflict. In 2007, the conductor was named a UN Messenger of Peace. I see that as a sort of uh, expression of confidence in what I do, and I'm very flattered. I'm not a politician, I have no political ambitions, and I have no wish to have any contact with any of the political players in the Middle East. Outside, yes. For the young musicians playing in this orchestra and performing for the first time at the United Nations in Geneva means a lot. Time Khalifi is a violinist from Palestine. It's an honor that we're here and that the UN is having us um, to you know, honor human rights and to celebrate that day, especially because um, we come from places where actually human rights are, are being basically broken all the time. Mirav Kadichevsky is an oboist from Israel. Our orchestra is about music and humanity and seeing each other as people. And um, we managed to do it in a, in a fantastic, really inspiring way. Just this shows that such a thing is possible, such a collaboration and an acceptance of the other and a mutual empathy and understanding and curiosity for each other's situation. And I think that if it's possible in our orchestra, it could be possible outside our orchestra. The concert comprised of three symphonies composed by Mozart in 1788. What music does teach is that everything is connected. When you have an orchestra of 50 or 60 musicians, every note that is played by every musician is connected to something else. So, the lessons that one can learn, if we look at our dreadful Israeli-Palestinian conflict. You cannot solve by itself. You cannot solve the justice that the Palestinian demands by itself. And you cannot solve the security that Israel wants. It only works together. The Human Rights Chamber was a fitting venue for a concert devoted to mutual respect and understanding and a venue to reflect on what more could be done to advance human rights and human dignity, inspired by performers that embody the spirit of peace.
This report was produced by Sandra Miller for the United Nations.